Hello, my name is Max Taylor and I'm the Senior Regional Analyst at Intelligence Fusion covering the Middle East region. And this week's podcast, we're discussing the security relationship between Iran and the USA in the Middle East and any potential Iranian activity to mark the one year anniversary of the death of Qasem Soleimani. So Qasem Soleimani was a high-ranking commander within the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps, or the IRGC, who was killed in a US drone strike just outside of Baghdad International Airport on January the 4th, 2020. And as the one-year anniversary of this event has now been and gone, there's been a lot of chatter uh, amongst analysts and policymakers as well as journalists discussing whether or not Iran is going to carry out some form of military retaliation to try and mark the one-year anniversary of this event. A lot's changed since the strike itself took place. We've seen Iran uh, carry out ballistic missile attacks on US bases uh, directly after the incident, as well as a series of smaller attacks, which we'll talk about in more detail later on in the podcast. But one revelation as well is also that we've seen this year is the inclusion of private security contractors in Iranian discourse as as to who is involved in the incident itself. And again, we'll also be talking about this later when we talk about uh, particularly the role of G4S and their accusations in Iranian media later on in the podcast. If you like what you see today, then please feel free to like, comment or subscribe. So to get started, if we're going to talk about the uh, potential for Iranian retaliation, we need to look at where exactly can Iran respond and what options does Iran have? So geographically, Iran's got militias based across the Middle East in a network of militias who are funded and at times directly supported by the Iranian military. And whilst there's a uh, very large number of militias involved in this network, some of the key ones that we're going to talk about today are the Popular Mobilization Forces, or Hashtar Shabi, who are uh, the PMF based in Iraq. There's the Houthi rebels based in Yemen, Hezbollah forces based in Lebanon, as as well as Syria, as well as uh, uh, high levels of Iranian uh, influence within the Syrian government forces. And lastly, the Hamas militant group based in the Gaza Strip. So starting with Iraq and the Popular Mobilization Forces, or the PMF. The PMF, as you can see on the screen right now, have been highly active in fighting uh, within Iraq, particularly uh, against the Islamic State group. And as you can see on the map, there's been there's clusters of incidents from uh, in places such as Diyala province to the northeast of Baghdad, as well as Salahuddin to the north, where PMF forces have played a very pivotal role in supporting security forces in the fight against Islamic State militants, who still to this day have a very significant presence, in particularly in the rural areas of Iraq in the north. And the presence of these largely Shia PMF militias has at times caused uh, quite a lot of tension between the communities. However, it's, it's also believed that Iraqi security forces would be uh, unable to have have combated the Islamic State in the way that they have without the support. So regardless of these sectarian tensions, the PMF have very much ingrained themselves into the Iraqi security forces. Also, despite having largely aligned anti-Islamic state views with uh, the US-led coalition, the PMF is also an extension of Iranian foreign policy in Iraq and has been involved in a series of attacks targeting uh, US-led coalition assets. And these assets have included the targeting of the US embassy in Baghdad in the international zone with unguided rockets, as well as the targeting of uh, of convoys run by contractors in the south of Iraq, as you can see along the international highway. As these convoys travel from the Kuwaiti border area towards Baghdad, they've been targeted by IEDs, which generally don't cause any casualties. And these convoys aren't uh, military convoys. These are convoys run by contractor companies who are affiliated with the US-led coalition. And this targeting of contractors is actually quite a uh, a new addition to the tensions between Iran and USA. And this uh, inclusion of contractors within the broader rhetoric around these tensions was really heightened when um, Iran accused the G4S private security company who provides security at Baghdad International Airport of being involved in the death of Qasem Soleimani, who was killed close to Baghdad International Airport. So this adds another another layer to the to the situation. So moving away from Iraq and onto Yemen, where the Houthi rebels have been engaged in the Yemeni civil war against the Saudi and UAE-backed Yemeni government. Houthi rebels generally are very occupied with fighting against the uh, Yemeni government forces. However, they've also carried out frequent attacks using long-range drones and ballistic missiles, which have been supplied by Iran. And these attacks have targeted both uh, uh, targets within Yemen itself, as well as in Saudi Arabia, including military facilities such as Najran Airfield, just north of the uh, Yemeni border here, as well as uh, civilian assets such as oil facilities run by Aramco. And some of these facilities, most of these facilities have been close to the Yemeni border, but some have actually been very deep inside of Saudi Arabia, suggesting that Iran is starting to equip these militias with the uh, capacity to carry out long-range attacks. 
And uh, on the on the note of long range attacks, actually, the Houthi rebels have recently started to be very vocal about their plan to carry out an attack targeting Israel. And this threat does appear to have been taken seriously by Israel, who allegedly deployed Iron Dome missile interceptor systems to the southern city of Eilat, showing that there simply isn't that to, to Israeli security, this simply isn't just a, an empty threat, and it has been taken seriously. Uh, moving away from Yemen into Syria and he- and Lebanon, so. The Hezbollah group, which is uh, primarily from from Lebanon, has been heavily an- involved in the Syrian civil war, fighting on the side of the Syrian government. And whilst they've been involved in fighting against rebel forces, they've also been acted as a way of placing pressure on Israel, one of the uh, uh, a key member of the US-led coalition's alliance in the Middle East region. And as we can see on the map right now, there's a series of blue airstrike markers in southern Syria, close to the Israeli border. And these strikes have been carried out by Israeli aircraft as they've targeted these Iranian-backed Hezbollah militia close to the, to the Israeli border. And much like militias in both Iraq and, uh, and in, in Yemen, these militias are believed to have uh, long-range missile capability capable of targeting major settlements within Israel and therefore placing pressure on the US-led coalition. So this is another potential uh, area where Iran may choose to carry out some form of retaliation. And lastly, moving into the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip is where the Hamas militant group is, uh, is in control and... Oh, and whilst they generally are restricted to quite short-range rocket attacks into Israeli border communities, again, they have received uh, uh, military support from Iran, and this has come in the form of longer-range missiles. And whilst the group does generally refrain from targeting the cities such as Tel Aviv and Jerusalem further north of the Gaza Strip, it is believed that they are capable to do, of doing so. And again, this could be another area where Iranian proxies may uh, uh, choose to put pressure on the US-led coalition as a form of retaliation. So we've spoken about the geographical locations of where Iran has this network of militias and how they may possibly uh, carry out attacks against the US-led coalition. But there's more to this question of as to whether Iran will carry out some form of retaliation than simple military considerations at a geographical level. For example, we have to take into account the politics uh, in the USA right now, as well as in Iran, and also Iraq itself, where USA and Iran have carried out much of their activity and where both countries have a significant presence. So with uh, the much um, the highly covered U.S. election, uh, uh, U.S. presidential changeover now now approaching, Iran may be taking into account that the more uh, uh, the more unpredictable Trump administration, and with their foreign policy being more prone to using military force, is on its way out. Iran may be reluctant to carry out some form of activity now, simply fearing that a, a Trump administration may be very very willing to use military force to counter any Iranian. Iranian activity. Furthermore, a Biden administration is expected to be uh, is expected to be less willing to use force in the Middle East, and is, going to, is expected to be under more pressure to withdraw forces from the U- uh, from the Middle East. So, Iran may be unwilling to jeopardize this U.S. troop withdrawal and the pace at which it's taking place across the Middle East by carrying out some form of attack. So, Iran it, it it can be plausibly suggested that Iran is biding its time here rather than carrying out some major attack just before the U.S. presidential changeover. We've also got to look at uh, Iranian internal politics, and this is a notoriously difficult uh, theme to unravel, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it's always worth mentioning that. We've talked about the strategic consequences of an Iranian strike right now in the context of the US elections, and it not seeming like a, a sound idea from an Iranian perspective, but we've also got to take into account that Iranian internal pressure from the military itself to carry out some form of attack may be present on Iranian policymakers. And so whilst it may seem unlikely that they're going to carry out an attack right now, it's worse at least... Uh, bearing in mind that there is pressure, uh, there will be pressure from the Iranian military to be seen as doing something in the face of uh, of uh, in the face of U.S. activity in Iraq, and also as Iran becomes under increasing pressure to be seen as doing something to mark the one-year anniversary of Qasem Soleimani. And lastly, is uh, an area that isn't really spoken much about in the context of the relationship between USA and Iran. And this is the internal politics of Iraq and the relationship of foreign forces in Iraq, both U.S. and Iran. So the PMF has targeted uh, U.S. assets as well as U.S. contractors affiliated with, uh, as well as contractors affiliated with the U.S.-led coalition. However, it's worth noting that a lot of these contractors are actually Iraqi companies or staffed by Iraqi nationals, and as a result, the casualties from these attacks targeting U.S. facilities have, generally speaking, been Iraqi security forces or Iraqi civilians. And this serves to increase the anti-foreign forces sentiment taking place in Iraq right now. And Iran, uh, Iran will certainly be aware that there's been a series of protests which have denounced Iran-backed militias in Iraq, particularly in the Shia areas of southern Iraq. So Iran 
must take into account this uh, precarious uh, this precarious relationship that it currently has. Uh, any collateral damage may further alienate Iranian influence from average Iraqi civilians. And the same goes for the USA. The USA is is a uh, is under similar pressure. There's a very, very popular anti-foreign forces feeling in Iraqi protests right now, both US and Iranian. So any US response or any US activity has to take into account that they serve, that they run the risk of alienating the Iraqi civilians. What are the insights from today's podcast? The first is that Iran is expected to use proxy forces rather than conventional military forces to carry out some form of military retaliation against a US-led coalition. The second is that key potential targets are those that we've seen in previous attacks, such as US-led military assets, as well as contractors affiliated with the US-led coalition. And lastly, Iran is likely to be taking into account the US presidential changeover and potential changes in foreign policy in US administrations. At Intelligence Region, we find, monitor and analyze incidents from across the world at our 24-7 operations center. If you want to find out more about the data behind this podcast, or you want to see how our tailored intelligence platform can help your business, then please click on the link in the podcast description.